Spurs against Manchester City. And it was a Tottenham Hotspur win. No Harry Kane in this one. Bit of hush hush on his whereabouts, it seemed, especially from Nuno Espirito Santo. He didn't really want to get drawn on that. Apparently, he was in the stadium, though. But it was Hyun Min Son who did score the only goal of the game. Nadem. Can City afford a slow start this time around, like last season, with the chasing pack looking like they do? Well, you know, it, it, it's a tough one to say. I think circumstances have led to them being in a position where most of their team being all together only happened for the first time on Thursday before this game. So they're not going to be at their best. I think when you look at the team today, for most people you say that's not their, all time, their best starting eleven. But it was a game in which they probably could have won. They weren't great. But it wasn't as if it was the worst game in the world for them. And, you know, you can you can get you can live or die off a start. You can say this is the most important thing, but sometimes it feels like a massive overreaction. Because of the fact of the matter is, you know, the thirty seven more games to go and they're three points off top as we speak. But yeah, I think they'll be they'll be disappointed with the result because they could have they could have done more, but some players could have played better. But I think they understand the length of the season and the importance of just making sure you hit form at the exact right time. And last year, obviously, they struggled in the first bit of it and they might not be able to do that this time. But, you know, I believe in that manager, I believe in those players and they're all winners at the end of the day. So I think they'll find a way. It's a Champions League final, though, Stevie, with no mm. goals. Community Shield, no goals. And then the opening day of the Premier League, no goals. Points towards something being needed there. Well, I think two of the three, um, the Community Shield and today, you have to give them a little bit of a pass. Listen, if we want to, if we want to judge... Manchester City on what we expect from them, then today was a bit of a calamity because defensively they were under pressure every time that, that Spurs went at them. Going forward, they created nothing. The £100 million player in Grealish who didn't contribute going forward or defensively, that's the kind of standards we judge City on. But you can look at it in the cold light of day and say, they haven't been training together pretty much. They're not 100% fit. And when you're, held, when you're held to a certain standard and fall below it, you're going to get criticised. And so, yes, we criticise them for the performance that we saw uh, because they deserve to get criticised. But the truth is, they're, going to get, they're just going to get better and better every time they step on the field from now. Just a bad day at the office. Okay, yeah, just a start and uh, a loss for them. Frank, what did you make of City's performance today? That was a good one, the first 20 minutes, I would say. They had many chances to score, and they, if they would have, uh, maybe it would have been a, another um, analysis uh, that would, we would have, make, uh, would have made sorry, uh, right now. But uh, they didn't, and uh, little by little, they started to be a little bit clumsy. Well, a lot clumsy, and, uh, and, um, and fragile, I would say, defensively. Um, you know, we can also discuss about the goal of Son. I don't know, Ruben Diaz is definitely the guy who changed Manchester City last year, being so strong defensively. But you know that, that thing that where you put, like you have a handcuff and you've been arrested to the, from the cops, you know, you, you, you put your hands behind the, the back. And in, in fact, he's unbalanced the, his, uh, his body. I'm pretty sure he would have kept, you know, his, his, his hands or his arms alongside him. He, he, maybe he could have caught the ball, the ball. So there is some stuff to sort out. Of course, it's not the main and the, and the, and, the, and the first eleven we want to see. Uh, many people are going to come in, going to come on. Sorry, and uh, and we don't we shouldn't make a statement. That's for sure. City is going to get better. I think it was the right time for Tottenham to uh, to uh, to play against them. And you have to give uh, also credit to the uh, Hotspur team. Well, this is what Pep Guardiola said about his side not scoring uh, in this game. He said it's the same people as last season when we scored lots of goals. It has happened. What is important is we are there, the last cross. We arrived many times there, and today we could not score, but it is the same mystery. We are the same. We are good enough to create chances and score goals, and we are going to do it. Nadam, how much does City need Harry Kane right now? <laughs> do you know, it appears so simple. It really does appear so, so simple, but, you know, I needed to do some research before I came on today, and like the, the two sides to this because you feel they need a number nine but then in the same breath yesterday I think they were uh, last season they were the top scorers in the Premier League with 83 goals without Sergio Aguero for long parts of it so you know we can look at these moments and say oh, if, a, if they had a striker if they had a striker but last year they did exceptionally well without one I think if someone like Kane did come in maybe they might be able to create a couple more chances just off his own back but 
you know, it feels like you need something for me in a bigger way to replace Sergio Aguero, as opposed to you need somebody to be able to take some of those chances. Because as I said, this for the last three, four years, they're averaging between 80 and 100 goals a season. And that's whether there's a nine playing or playing with, I don't know, six number eights or whatever. It makes, for City, the way that they play sometimes, it makes no difference. And as Frank was alluding to, if they took those chances earlier in the game, then it would have been in a better position. But there's no guarantee that just because they have a strike on the field, that that would be the case. Because we've got someone, in, they have someone in Ferran Torres who had a very good tournament in the summer for Spain. You know, he could have taken some chances. Mares could have taken chances. And, you know, you don't necessarily want to be too reliant on a nine. But like I say, for me personally, seeing somebody come in that's going to replace Sergio Aguero is a bigger thing in terms of a statement. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be scoring more goals like that, in my opinion. And obviously, we don't want to draw too many conclusions from the opening day of the season. But we did see big wins for Chelsea. For Manchester United, Liverpool getting the players back, a big win for them as well. Stevie, what do you think about them not being able to afford a slow start this time around this season? <laughs> did you mean me? I did mean you. <laughs> um, listen, I understand what, what Nadam's saying, but I personally don't think you can rely on it. Yes, they won the Premier League with, with not having Aguero for a fair bit. It just it doesn't... It doesn't look right. They didn't look comfortable today going forward. And, and if you're going to have... If you're going to have... I was going to say an invisible nine, because that's pro pretty much what they had today, then it can only be De Bruyne, in my opinion. Because I think it's a gamble. It, too, too much of a gamble to think that they can go through another season playing with a false nine and win the Premier League. I do. I just... But I don't think they do think that, though, right? That's why we're hearing these higher figures for Harry Kane and that price getting met. Well, I think, I think it then comes down to... As far as we're concerned, it's not about money because we all believe that City have got the money. So, clearly, Pep and the, the board um, think that they can do this. I just personally don't think they can. I think they're gambling... With, with the Premier League title, if they think they can go through the rest of the season playing with the false nine. I think that's a gamble. I don't think they can do it twice in a row. Frank, let's talk about Spurs, though. After today's performance, do you think they're going to be able to cope this season without Harry Kane if he does go? Well, who knows, you know? Again, I go back to the first 20 minutes of the game where I saw them, you know, struggling a lot. And I say, well, if, the, if Manchester City scores a goal, it's going to be very, very hard. And they got stronger and stronger throughout the, the, the game. And, uh, and they, they, they did well. And they, they're not fit enough. Uh, uh, fit, still fit, you know? I can see some players still struggling, coming back from the Euros or coming back from, from, from other competitions uh, and not being fit enough. I, I think Son... Uh, I didn't see the best son uh, that I ever seen when I, when, when he, last year, for example, with Kane. But he can show some, uh, some skills and he's going to do the job. Well, it's going to be a hard season for Tottenham. But if they have the spirit that they showed during the second half, everything is possible. That's, that's, what we, that's why we love football. It's a men's sport. It's, uh, it's a, some, some people who want to fight together. It's a collective sport. And if you do so, you can surprise many, many other teams. And it's what they did today because they've been stubborn. They didn't want to let it go and they scored a goal. And it's enough to win a game. Nathan, what did you think of Spurs' performance today? I, I agree with Frank. I think in the first 20 minutes, they didn't look great. It seemed as if in some ways they didn't really have a true strategy in terms of how they were going to get the ball forward and so on because they were losing it so often. But as the game developed, they did seem more comfortable and they looked more dangerous when they were trying to catch City on the break with Bergwijn with Son, with Lucas Moura, people who can dribble with the ball and you have people stretching it. I thought they did look good from that side of it. And defensively today, I thought they were good and I thought they were strong. They don't, come, they don't seem to me as if they're going to be a team this season who might make maybe 30, 40 passes and control the game and create lots of chances like that. But, you know, speed kills, especially in football. So the fact is, you know, they will always have a chance. But still looking at them, I still consider them to be in that next crop after the top four. Time will tell how they do, but today I think in the end, you know, they deserved the win because they defended so well. And, they, and as Frank alluded to, this is probably the best time to play Man City, but you know they still made the most of it. So Nadem's saying the crop outside of the top four. Could um, they make the top four this season? No, not a chance. Not with this squad. Uh, you you can't not praise them for for how they played against City uh, with the desire and yes, they defended well, 
Um, but the truth is, we're playing against a City side that never asked that many questions. You ain't going through the season with Dyer and Sanchez as your centre backs for the, for the kick off. It, it's just not going to happen. You've got a goalkeeper in Urice, in my opinion, who has a mistake in him. And he actually made a horrendous mistake after three minutes coming for a ball that he was never going to get. So, yes, today was, was a great performance, but I, lo I think a lot of this was down to how poor City were. And, and the way that they set up, I was surprised that, that particularly at half-time, Pep didn't change it because the second half of the first half, it was clear that Tottenham were just getting a second ball and then getting after the back line of City. He should have made a, he should have made a change in the middle of the park and solidified the middle of the park. Other teams will do that. Other teams will be stronger than City were today. And I think Tottenham's absolutely looking at mid-table. There's no way they're getting close to the top four. No, cl no so, way. So you say mid-table. Can they make Europe then, at least outside the top four? Can they make the Europa League? I, right now, I would say no. They've just beaten Manchester City, <laughs> the champions, and you're saying no right well, now. We've just sat here and told you that the problems that Man City have had, they haven't, they haven't trained together, they haven't played together much. You brought Grealish in, who, who in my opinion today, was he, he could have been having a cokey back on the back of Sterling. The two of them were standing on the left-hand side, which a lot of the times left the holes in the middle when the ball was coughed up for, for Tottenham. With, with Lucas Moura and Son and Bergwijn getting after City. That's not going to happen every weekend, every time they step on the field. It's not. I just, I just don't think they're that good a team. I don't think they can defend particularly well uh, on a consistent basis. Yes, today was good, but that's not happening every time they step on the field. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just not a huge fan of Tottenham right now. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.